Hi everyone and welcome to my very first YouTube video. Not my first YouTube video. My first gaming let's play video on this channel. I am so excited and I am so nervous. This is something that I have been wanting to do for months now since I discovered that cozy gaming is a thing. I, it's perfect. I have been looking for something to do to kind of relax and unwind. Um, I'm disabled, so I am at home most of the time. And it is just, it's, and I have a lot of anxiety. And it's very hard for me to find ways to relax. So when I discovered Cozy Gaming and started watching some of your channels, I just fell in love with it. And I said, I need to do this. I used to game when I was younger and then just life got in the way and I just didn't have time to game as much. And I, I just got out of it. And I've been looking for an excuse to get back into it. And I think this is it. This is going to be great. I hope, I think. Um, again, new at this. So there's going to be a lot of nervous energy in my first I don't know, thousand videos that I upload. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I expect that it'll get a little easier as I make more and more content as I do intend to do. Um, yeah, so uh, if you did not watch my introduction video, I encourage you to go and watch that now. If, if you're curious about a little bit more about me, and why T Cozy Gaming is the name of my channel and kind of what I'm here to do. Uh, I do have that video and I will link it below for you. Uh, but today we are playing a game that I, found, I discovered on YouTube from other cozy gamers. And this game has made list of favorite cozy games and most cozy games. I believe it came out last year. Now, somehow, uh, okay, this game is Beacon Pines. I'm not going to withhold the title like it's some big secret because it's literally written in the title. Um, I'm playing playing Beacon Pines and I have actually started this game and I was playing it and somehow, despite the, the cover image, the cover art, uh, looking at it now, it seems very obvious that there's this ominous forest in the background and like the cat on the left hand side is just looks terrified of, of something that's off screen. And somehow I just didn't pick up on the creepy elements in this. So I went in playing it going, OK, this is a cozy little game. This will be nice. This will be relaxing and fun. And it is. But it took a bit of a dark twist that I wasn't expecting. And when I got to that dark twist, I thought, hey, this would be a lot of fun to record and uh, play for my first video. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to stop talking and we're going to get into Beacon Pines. I am starting the game from the beginning, uh, so you're not going to miss anything. And uh, yeah, let's just get right in. Dear reader, allow me to introduce you to my book. Though it might at first appear like many books you've come across, it is far from ordinary. You may, therefore, have some misunderstandings about its nature. The story that awaits you has not been fully told. In fact, its conclusion is not yet known, even to myself. It is in that way that my book is special. It is in that way that you are special. I am? Without you, there is no story. Chapter one. Normal isn't what it used to be. And I really, I have to say, I love the storybook format of this game. I'm a big reader and I'm just, it, it won me as soon as this I saw it. It's a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. 
far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. Ugh, the art in this game is so beautiful. The music is too. And he's so cute. Oh my gosh. Hey, Dad. How are things going? Today's the first day of summer vacation. I start middle school next year, I guess. I was six years old when you died. And it's been six years now. From here on out, you'll have been gone longer than you were here. It feels like that should mean something. Mom always said that this tree was your favorite spot in the world. It is a very pretty tree. Me too. Oh, the big tears and his big eyes. It hurts. Hey, Luca. I knew I'd find you here. Rolo was Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. <laughs> well, after I banged on your door till your grand answered, and after I checked the pond and climbed up to the tree house, then I knew I'd find you here. Rolo finally noticed the tears welling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Oh, yeah, right. You and your mom always did this on your dad's birthday. Yeah. I didn't know if you were going to keep doing it now that your mom's gone too. She's not gone. She's just... missing. Sorry, I meant to say since she was missing. She's gonna come back, Rolo. Of course she is. Oh, so his dad's dead and his mom's gone too. Okay, Dad, see you next time. I think I'm ready to get out of here. Sure, lead the way. Ugh, such a sad start. This is cute, though. <laughs> I remember that from when I last played this a little. Oh, so cute. Tickle! Wonderful! I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. What are you? My cat is just meowing. I don't know. I don't know why. <laughs> that charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Okay, I think I can do the... I think I can do it again. Can I do it again? Why is that the cutest thing ever? Oh yeah, I almost forgot. The whole reason I was looking for you. I was wondering if you'd ever get to that. I found the perfect way to start our summer. How's that? Rolo looked to the side suspiciously. <laughs> Not here. They might be watching. They who? Shh. Not so loud. We need to do this in a secure location. Mission control. Alright, I just have to tell Gran and then we can head out. What are you going to tell her? I don't know. I'll think of something. If it's all the same to you, I'll meet you at the welcome sign. Your Gran still kind of wigs me out. I don't do well with new people. Same dude, same. She moved in, like, half a year ago. Just meet me at the sign when you're done. Suit yourself, I won't be long. Tell Gran before heading out with Rolo. I think check my bag. To-do list and my little charms. Perfect. Okay. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon Pines. They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Mm. Some of them can be found in this very house. 
Hmm. Well, I guess we better explore a little bit then. Just some dusty knickknacks. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more peaceful, more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. It's not a bad thing. I love flowery fabric. But I'm kind of an old lady at heart, because I also love lawn gnomes. I don't know why. Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Mm -hmm. That's nice, though. Ah, just chillaxing. Ooh, ponder. <laughs> Can I do that again? Oh my gosh. Okay, just watch this. <laughs> Just this lazy slide off the recliner. We don't want to get up. Do we have to play the game? Can we just sleep all day? Is that an option? We can just like not meet our friend. We can just chill out in this nice house. The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Nothing if they let the water run. Nope. Oh. A pair of dull scissors, a broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. <laughs> Junk. An array of prepared meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. Wasn't there something over by the table, or was that just... no. Okay. Alright. Oh my! This is quite exciting! I am now certain that you are the one I have been waiting for all these years. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. Hmm. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Yeah, and that's what that's another thing I like about this game, because I love games where it's just like a story game and it's kind of point and click, but there are choices you have to make and they actually influence how the game turns out. Guys, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. A sturdy old wheelbarrow. Yep. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. <laughs> she always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. <laughs> he's so cute. Oh, he runs, his little arm, he's so adorable. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. Hey, Gran, I'm gonna go... For Pete's sake, go change out of your pajamas before you say another word. But, but nothing. Inside clothes are for inside. And outside clothes are for outside. Luca stared at his feet and muttered under his breath. Mom always let me wear my pajamas in the garden. Well, Eleanor isn't here, is she? Now go upstairs, change, and then we'll talk. Right, of course. I forgot about the pajamas. Right, narrator? You could have warned me. Ugh. I don't see what the big deal is. Why can't I wear my pajamas in the garden? It's not like it's church or school or... Ooh, I left the fridge open. Okay. Oops. Grand probably wouldn't like that either. Probably get yelled at. Maybe. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Mm. Gosh, I really hope his mother is still alive. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. Hide. Hmm, what's grandma hiding in that closet? 
Do we trust Grandma? Luca tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even hmm? though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. <laughs> chill. He's so cute. Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Fair. Fair. Your father dies, your mother disappears, and then your grandmother takes over all your space. Anything over here? Grand's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. Mm hmm Nice. Okay, Grandma. I'm in my nice cozy little sweater. Now will you talk to me? Okay, I'm gonna go hang out with Rolo for the day. See you later. Hold up now. Where are you and Rolo headed exactly? Oh, nowhere special. The less grand new, the better for everyone involved. Mm-hmm. Don't tell adults what you're up to. We were just gonna go... Ah. Ponder, hide, or chill. It makes most sense. Chill, probably. We were just gonna go chill, chill for, the for the day. Yeah, we're chill. We were just gonna go chill for the day. The best lies are built on truth. You boys, I like spaced out for a minute. That was weird. You, bo you boys are always in a hurry to do nothing. We stick to what we're good at. We'll make sure you are done chilling in time for supper. Easy. Hmm. Yeah, Grandma Impressive. doesn't believe us. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. Or rather, Grandma knows we're up to something. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. I think it's time to introduce you to the Chronicle. The Chronicle? The Chronicle? Okay. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Well, okay then. A grand jury. I just noticed the chapter. We were gonna go hide. Ponder. We were just gonna go ponder for the day. We were just gonna go ponder for the day. Oh, really? What are you boys going to ponder on such a lovely day exactly? This was Lucas' chance to sell his alibi. Hmm. Um, you know, big stuff, small stuff medium mostly medium pondering nailed it <laughs> nailed it <laughs> well make sure you don't overburden yourself with a preponderance of pondering huh oh forget it off with you now bye grandma oh and luca you and rollo stay out of trouble I know, I know. <laughs> get into trouble with Rolo. That is our first objective. After being told not to get in trouble. I like it. I like it. Let's get into trouble. There's nothing else in here, right? Okay. Anything over here? No. Stomp. Cool. Come on, come on. Woo! Dang it, Rolo. Dang.
Dang it, man. The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. You know the drill. Don't let anyone discover our secret path. <laughs> Play Chapter cool, two. turn and run. Welcome to Beacon Pines. Oh, thank you. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Sharper Valentine. It's kind of a cool. Over name. the next thirty years, the town had grown jerk? and prospered until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Hey, Mr. Kerr. Hey there, pal. William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. He looks like... He looks sleazy. He looks like a... No, he looks like, um... The Hunger Games. Caesar. Caesar Flickerman? Is that his name? That's who he looks like. Oh, um, sure. I don't think I read the first line before. I think he said, are you excited for the festival? Oh, um, sure. Come on now, when I was your age, there was nothing more exciting than a town festival. The food, the music, the dancing. Sounds pretty alright. You're gosh dang right it is. I'm looking forward to letting off some steam myself. Make sure to invite all of your little friends. I couldn't keep Rillo away even if I tried. Excellent. Sorry, Luca, I've got to get back to the proverbial grindstone. Our harvest awaits and all that. Ho oh, now. The left side's a little low. Sorry, young Mr. Van Horn. Can't talk now. Very busy with preparations. Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. Mm. Oh, sorry, Gus. How many times do I... It's Mayor Valen... Ugh. Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. Keep up the good work. I must briefly attend to a concerned citizen. Huh? It's nothing. Keep at it. All right. What can the mayor of Beacon Pines do for you today? Oh, just saying hi, I guess. Hmm. Well, good day to you too, young Mr. Van Horn. <laughs> Adults are weird. You're all weird. Ooh, zooming in. Anything? Is there a reason? Is there something I'm not seeing? Mm, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why that happened. All right. Hello, sir. Zzz. Hey, Mr. Sinclair. Mr. Sinclair continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was. A tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. <laughs> Yahoo, Mr. Sinclair. Bah, don't you see I'm sleeping, boy? How's the napping today? Crummy as always. Used to have a perfectly nice view from here. Till perennial harvest put that monstrosity of a building in the way. Why don't you just move your chair a bit? Why should I be the one that moves? 
If it's a showdown they want, I ain't gonna be the one who blinks. <laughs> hmm. That does suck. Come on, Andy, grab his wallet. I'm sorry, Iggy, I can't. Do it or we pound ya. Yup. Yeah, but my mom said, yeah, but, yeah, but. If I had a nickel for every yeah, but, I'd be freaking, I'd be the freaking king of nickels. Ain't that right, Tish? Yup. <laughs> king of nickels! Hmm. You're a bully, aren't you? Don't like bullies. Mr. Van Horn, do you have a moment? It's just Luca. Golly, I'm sorry. It's my first week at Perennial Harvest. He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Wonderful. It won't happen again. If we are going to be on a first name basis, then you can call me Pete. Oh, nice to meet you, Pete. Sorry, what are you writing? Oh, just documenting. Gosh, it's exciting to be a part of something so darn special. You know, it's not just about new fountains and phone booths. We're gonna change the world. And it all starts here in Beacon Pines. Isn't that amazing? Uh-huh. Anyway, I'd better get... Oh, that reminds me. We'd love to hear your thoughts. My thoughts? You bet! If we're gonna change this town, we need to get every detail right. That sounds intense. Ha ha ha. Changing the world is intense. So, what do you say? Could you answer a few questions? Well, I guess if it's quick. Wonderful! Open, in, open to answering a few quick questions. One down. See, it's not that hard, is it? Oh, okay. We're going already. Question two. What is something you love about Beacon Pines? I've never really thought about it before. Perfect! It's the only place I've ever lived. See, that wasn't so painful. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. Was it? Uh, I guess not? Huzzah! Our first three questions answered in record time. Are you literally writing down everything? Thank you so much for your time. I need to process these answers. We can save the rest of your thoughts for later. Okay. Our harvest awaits. What a weirdo. What a strange... All right, Rolo's waiting up at the treehouse. Okay, that was strange. What a weird little raccoon man. Hey, Judson. Is the line playing any tunes today? No bites this morning, I'm afraid. Come to think of it, I can't remember the last time I reeled one in. But hey, it was never about the catch. This is where I come to think. Yeah, that's what my dad used to do here. That reminds me. If you ever want his chair back, I've taken a standing recently. It keeps me from falling asleep at the reel. If you don't mind, I think it should stay. Not at all. An empty chair makes for a great listener. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Hmm. We're in a memory. Go pick out your bait from the tackle box, buckaroo. Hmm. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. <laughs> Tickle or junk? Luca junk. tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? <laughs> Can you fish with string? Well, 
I mean, I guess string looks like worm, a worm, then maybe? Is that why? Wow, an old boot. That's glorious. Where do you think the other one is? Hard to say. Sometimes things drift away. That's not fair. No, it's not. Well, wherever it is, I hope that other boot at least has a sock to keep it company. <laughs> Can we go and use... Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. Good for skimming the surface. Let's see what the feather brings us. You're a fishy, fishy, fishy. Oh, you're a duck. You're not a fish at all. Well, I'll be switched. It's your old rubber ducky. You were just a little drooling ball of fur when you lost that. Cried for days. I told you I'd turn up. <laughs> Looks like we could use some new bait. What do you say we head out and find some more? I wonder how his dad died. Mission control. Authorized personnel only. <laughs> See, this is pretty cool. After Luca's father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank atomic star scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. Hmm. Good friend. You seem like a good friend, Rolo. Oh. <gasps> no, I don't get another chill or relax or something. Okay, that's fine. Let's see. Uh... On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Sorry, it's just the music in this. Like, it's beautiful. I remember the first time I played this game. Um, I mean, I never completed the game. Just a reminder, I've only played the beginning. Um, but when I started it last time and I heard this theme, like, literal, I had tears. Just, I don't know if it was the mood I was in, but, oh, it's so pretty. I need to find the soundtrack and just needs to be a bigger part of my life. Rollo thinks it's aliens. Rollo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. <laughs> Rollo is awesome. Okay, what's this top secret plan to start our summer? So you know the abandoned warehouse by my place? The old Valentine building? Yeah, well it isn't abandoned. What makes you think that? Get this. Last night, it was glowing. Glowing? Are you sure? Kinda. That place has been empty since... Since the foul harvest? Yeah. Who would even want to poke around that place? We would, Rolo. We would. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a busted old warehouse. I just meant we could do some research at the library. You want to actually go to the warehouse? What do you expect to find? Answers. My mom's out there somewhere. And it seems like everyone wants to pretend that she's gone for good. You don't have to come, Rolo, if you don't want to. Not the little, no, not the big tears in your eyes again. Don't, don't hurt me like that. Luca. Remember that time I sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop? 
and you jumped in and said it was your fault before my paw throttled me. This is a flaming chicken coop sort of deal. <laughs> I've got your back. Thanks, Rolo. Now that I think about it, poking around a decrepit fertilizer warehouse is exactly how I want to spend the first day of summer. Let's go! Oh my god, you like He dived out of there so fast! I barely had time to read it. Lucas winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. <laughs> Let's go! Luca looked up at the satellite dish. Rollo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. <laughs> Pull! While it didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. Hmm. Nothing else. Actually, I think the last time I started this game, I don't think I went out there onto the, the deck or whatever. The balcony. So I'm sure there are charms that I'm getting this time that I didn't get last time, and maybe that'll prevent the, the scary thing from happening. Or maybe the scary thing happens anyway, I don't know. The boys had a good thing going, as long as they kept old Jeff happy. Old Jeff. They had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. <laughs> yeah, I really love the music in this game. It's just so much fun. So fun, it's so pretty. Like, I love the art. Ah, the characters are great. Caesar Flickerman, that's that's a little jarring, but still like him. Though he's probably up to something shady. I'm just catching my breath a bit. Go on, I'll catch up. Oh, Rolo, and we love Rolo. I think that is going to do it for me today. This seems like a good place to stop. Uh, we've been introduced to our main characters, and we are on our way to an abandoned fertilizer warehouse where nothing but bad things, nothing but bad things could happen. Um, yeah, this is a lot of fun, and uh, like I said, I still have the nervous energy and I'm gonna have it for a while but I do hope that you enjoyed this video if you did please give it give it a thumbs up um, so that I know you liked it or leave a comment below to, to let me know what you thought um, I'm very new at recording videos and everything so I don't know how my microphone and my sound and all of that is so if you have any useful criticisms I would really appreciate that uh, I will be filming another episode of this and uploading it very soon, so subscribe if you would like to see more from me, and I will see you in my next video! Bye!